Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update. Thursday, July 27th, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. Day 18 of the Reykjanes Ridge, volcanic eruption in Iceland, and, well, people are losing interest. Almost half the viewership is yesterday, as a single cinder cone just putters away. The big story, earlier in the week, hail pounding the roof of a plane. A flight makes an emergency landing after a hailstorm causes extensive damage. Keep calm. It's boom time. Now, the aircraft's fuselage near the wings and the nose cone suffered substantial damage, as you can see here, and it scared the bejesus out of the passengers. A Delta aircraft bound for New York's JFK from Milan encountered a terrifying hailstorm shortly after takeoff, leading to a harrowing roller coaster like experience for all 251 passengers on board. The plane's fuselage near the wings and the nose cone suffered substantial damage on Monday, and as a result, the aircraft had to make an emergency landing in Rome. Holy macaroni. Severe thunderstorm watch ongoing in Massachusetts as a tornado reportedly was spotted in New Hampshire. The National Weather Service says a tornado touchdown was seen by a spotter in southwestern New Hampshire, and that is, well... That's a tornado. A tornado did touch down near the southwestern New Hampshire on Thursday, according to the National Weather Service. At 2.45 p.m., a National Weather Service spotter witnessed a tornado on the ground in Roxborough near Keene and moving 30 miles per hour to the east. The thunderstorm that spawned the tornado triggered a tornado warning for an area that included Jaffrey, Dublin, and Hancock, and hopefully all are safe and well. As the Northeast is bracing for strong storms that could bring damaging winds, hail, isolated tornadoes amid the hottest air of the summer. Now, the good news is, if you were watching last night, that we showed you the long-term forecast showing the Northeast getting into record low territory in the first week of August. Here's the full forecast. Dangerous heat and humidity building in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast. Dangerously high heat indices will impact millions of people as the heat spreads from the central U.S. into the mid-Atlantic and northeast and persists in the southwest. A weather system will interact with the atmosphere with potential for severe storms from the Midwest to the Great Lakes with critical fire weather conditions, including dry thunderstorm potential, are in the northern Great Basin. So heads up, it's dry and it's hot and it's summer. <laughs> Seismic update. No quakes of note. This one just rocking all 4.8 in Ecuador at depth. Maybe a little bigger rumbler up at the surface in a moment. But overall, all is quiet across the world. As we take a look at the worldwide volcano news update, Shishaldin, the eruptive phase has calmed down and the cinder cone is covered in ash after five explosions in the last week. We also have normal activity worldwide, Fuego to 15,000, Mayon, Puffing to about 10,000 feet there. We've got 15,000 to Fuego, 22 for Nevado de Ruiz, 21,000 for Ubinas. Krakatau puffing to 2,000 feet today with a localized emission. Liwotolo to 7,000, Sabancay to 23, Sangay to 21,000, Ulawan to 9,000 feet. And that is your volcano report for the day. As we are over at Fagralusval, we're listening to the fake volcano noise on day 18 of the eruption. Beautiful. All the links will be below so you can follow up and watch on your own time. Space weather news update. Well, it looks like the solar flare detector is down. Let's take a look at GOES X-ray flux. Looking like uh, just a few low-level M flares over the last 24 hours, nothing spectacular. The three-day geomagnetic forecast is all quiet. And the latest HMI intensity showing some activity, some plages and sunspots coming around the limb. We could be seeing some flaring in the next 24 hours due to that Earth-facing quiet situation. When spots turn around, they flare early and then they go quiet. That's just what happens. Where are we? Okay. So current geomagnetic for field and aurora here showing us down in KP1 
as the KP is descending towards psychic territory. Now take a look at this. The biggest volcano in the solar system may once have been an island. I doubt it. They're talking about Olympus Mons on Mars, which doesn't look like a volcano at all. It looks more like an electric discharge blister and a very big one. But they're also just suggesting that when Mars was young and soggy billions of years ago, the colossal Olympus Mons may have resembled Stromboli on a much larger scale, suggesting it was sticking out of a massive ocean. The only problem with that is there would be ancient shorelines on the giant volcano, and there are none. So a couple of big problems there with that article. <laughs> Scientific breakthrough may help pinpoint precious diamond mines most of these diamonds are found in what are called kimberlite pipes, which are eruptions that occur from deep in the mantle and may even erupt into space. And according to the study, the scientists found that most kimberlite volcano eruptions happened 20 to 30 million years after Pangaea broke up, gradually migrating from the edges of the continents towards the interiors. In fact, we have kimberlite pipe pipes here in Colorado. They found that the Earth's mantle the layer between the crust and the core was disrupted by rifting when two tectonic plates moved away from each other. This sees chunks of continental crust sink into the mantle below, removing substantial amounts of rock, in fact, tens of kilometers thick from the base of the continental plate, allowing for the kimberlite eruptions to occur. So there you have it. Everything you needed to know about diamonds. Now, do you know about a secretive federal agency's bombs that they put out in the woods? In fact, they're cyanide bombs, and they're planted throughout the American West. It was in service of the livestock industry, but is now killing pets and even harming people. Dotted, isn't that crazy? Yeah. Banning the cyanide bombs planted throughout the American West has been a hard task. But Cannon Mansfield here holds the collar of his dog, Casey, who was killed March 16, 2017, by an M44 cyanide bomb placed on public land by federal workers to kill coyotes near his home in Pocatello, Idaho. And there are tens of thousands of these out on BLM land waiting for, to go off. They're all hair-triggered, so all your pet has to go, go near it and touch it. And you as well. This is insane. If you didn't know about this, Please contact your politician and get these M44 cyanide bombs banned. Have you heard? Peru declares a national health emergency over mystery paralysis causing disease that is feared to be caused by contaminated tap water. Officials have reported 231 cases of the neurological disease in just five weeks. Jillian Barr syndrome typically follows an infection and causes paralysis, and that's what's happening here. There have been 231 cases of Guillain-Barr syndrome, GBS, since the start of this year, more than half of which occurred in a narrow five-week span from early June to mid-July. The majority of patients suffered progressive form of paralysis that starts at the feet and legs, slowly moves up to the torso and upper extremities. Patient samples had taken by Peruvian health officials during the five-week peak found a bacteria common in contaminated food and water, Campylobacter jejuni which was also deemed responsible for similar Guillain-Barr syndrome outbreaks in Peru four years ago. So don't drink the water if you're in Peru. And in case you're wondering if we are in a grand solar minimum, well, solar cycle 24 and 25, black and green, are still two of the weakest solar cycles in secession since the 1800s. So... Them's are the facts. And solar max has already occurred. The solar polar fields are reversing. We have the official reverser, reversal of the northern polar field here. And this all happens during solar max. So solar max is now. And soon we will be headed back into solar minimum quite early. Now, campers beware. Colorado's deadliest animal killed 20 people last year. And it is not a mountain lion. It is not a bear. There are plenty of animals that can kill humans in Colorado. Black bears, mountain lions, rattlesnakes, bison, moose, even bighorn sheep. But the mosquito is the deadliest animal in Colorado. While tiny, this creature 
well, annoying creatures bite can be quite fatal in our state. In 2022, 20 Coloradans were killed by mosquito-transmitted West Nile virus. So be warned, stay away from the mosquitoes. And where will you be for the 2023 annular eclipse? It happens Saturday, October 14th, and it will cross North, Central, and South America. It will be visible in parts of the United States, Mexico, and many countries in South and Central America, and it will go right through our backyard. The U.S. In the U.S., the annual solar eclipse begins in Oregon at 9.13 a.m. and ends in Texas, the nexus of the Shmexis, at 12.03 p.m. And here is the path of the annual solar eclipse in all countries and the dates in the West where it will be the best. Here we are probably around Albuquerque time, somewhere between Utah and Albuquerque. So it will begin here around 9, 10 a.m. and end around noon. So we get to see the whole thing and hopefully we'll be able to maybe live stream it. Who knows? There's also a total solar eclipse just a few months later on April 8th, 2024. It's a little to the east of this one and all the links will be below and that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. Become a Patreon, support the work we do and watch all of our productions commercial free in one place. And be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. Mm-hmm.